I want to address something before I begin this review. Why is it almost every single week when I do my review, everybody has to post spoilers in the comments? I had this entire episode pretty much spoiled to me before I even walked into this episode. And it's not that I purposely go looking for spoilers. I, I actually see these spoilers when I look through my comments to actually be able to reply to people, and it pops up constantly. And so, I cannot really dodge spoilers. So, I want to ask a question. Why does everybody have to spoil Mekaku City actors? I do not read the manga. I do not listen to the music videos. I do not do the light novels. I don't read the light novels. I am an anime-only watcher introduced into this fan base. I make up theories because it's entertaining to make theories up for what is going to happen. When I make theories, I don't want all the answers given to me right on the spot about what really will happen. The fun of watching an anime or the fun of reading a book, a fun of reading a manga or anything is to be able to think what you think is going to happen and theorize. And it kills the entertainment and enjoyment value and the entire essence of watching or reading because it's all spoiled to you. Yes, there are some things you can you already know what's going to happen and still be enjoyable, but with an anime like this, for a series like Mechaku City Actors, it's a series built upon furies and at the same time figuring out what is going to happen next. And when you already have the entire thing spoiled to you, you don't have as much entertainment value. So I want to ask all of you right now that continue to post spoilers, please tone it down. If you're going to post spoilers, at the very least, put a spoiler tag on the top of the comments. I know people that watch, read the manga and, you know, are interested in the anime want to talk about what future events. Fine. But post a spoiler tag, please. This is all I ask out of you because I want to go into this anime not knowing what's going to happen next. I don't want to have everything just given to me. And that's how I feel about every anime. So anyways, let's get on to this review now that I got that out of the way. Okay, so this episode, besides certain things that got spoiled to me about the mother's name, Azumi, and finding out pretty much about Mary's 100% the child of the monster, finding out about how these serpents are going in other people's bodies, and you have it to where they're all crowding around Mary now, there are some good things in this episode. So we find out, if I'm correct, it seems like these snakes can only enter people on August 15th. So it goes back to my earlier theory I had on, on this series. Pretty much this entire event of people getting sucked up into this other world, the little monster's world, can only happen on August 15th. So that's the big importance of this date. Another thing that pretty much happened this episode that was really interesting to find out was getting to see the backstory of the monster. The monster, it was, it was displayed. I knew it was going to happen because, as I said, it was spoiled, but it was still interesting getting to see how it was displayed to the entire audience. And it was emotional. It was getting to show you the entire events that that caused the monster girl to go into the world by herself. And it was sad and depressing. You could really see she cared for her husband, and the husband eventually died of old age, as we could see in this episode. And at first, I thought Mary was the child of the monster girl, Azumi, but as we find out, Mary's actually the granddaughter. So right there, I like that entire element of how that was introduced. We finally got the necessary backstory on this main element of the series about the monster and about the serpents. Speaking of the serpents, okay, so we clearly have been confirmed that there is one serpent that has its own will of his own. We really do not know exactly what has caused this serpent to have its own will. I have not been spoiled that, so I don't know. No. Pretty much, most likely, this serpent, I want to say, is a different entity all in all. I think it's another monster. It may not even be connected to this Medusa Azumi like monster. Most likely, this snake is something else that has, like, I guess, evil towards her. But either way, as we can see, the snakes that were connecting to Azumi went to these other people, hence everybody that in the series. And so they're trying to find the queen, as I talked about last week. So it seems Azumi, the monster girl, gave her queen powers to Mary. And so Mary now, the reason why why she's causing all these people with powers to come towards her is because the snakes on Ozumi, the little monster, is pretty much going towards her. They're leaving. They're leaving the, mo the original monster going to marry the new monster host or the new queen. And so I like that element, how it was introduced. And I love this episode for that. It was a good episode in the animation I enjoyed the animation this episode, even though the majority of this episode was black and white, and it was lazy on Shaft's part, it was still a good episode. It wasn't as bad as last week's episode with the freaking just CGI that, oof, that CGI, oh my god, that's bad. I like the song at the end, the song is really beautiful, I love the way you have Mary coming out of her shell and trying to make friends, and it just goes to show you the danger of Mary's power, how she can really petrify people like Medusa and kill them. 
And that's how bad her power can be. So I was like really shocked to see exactly how dangerous it could be if Mary could not control her eye abilities. Oh yes, one other thing we see in this episode, it seems that the Monster Girl actually had all the powers combined inside of her. For instance, we get to see the uh, visual effects of her eyes. It reminds me kind of the Sharingan Gun for Naruto. It has different things she can do, like she can uh, petrify people, she can cause them to run in fear, she can uh, hide people, she can reveal people, stuff like that with her eyes. All the powers we've seen demonstrated in this series already were all in the original monster. And I'm guessing eventually the end game, all these snakes are going to try to go into Mary and become the full, complete monster queen. I'm guessing. That's what I'm getting here from so far. But either way, I guess this was a good episode. Tell me your thoughts on it in the comments below and please try not to spoil everybody because I do not know what's going to happen after this episode onward. Love you all.